so to be able to be social and around all these people that you love and you've worked with for years and catch up, I mean, literally to be around many, many, many people was like, you didn't even realize how, um, how, uh, how good it was for the soul, for lack of a better word, to be social and working and working towards a common goal and the collective effort and everyone was rooting for each other. I just loved coming back to work and I think there's a lot of silver linings to, to challenging things and one of the silver linings to pandemic is we all, we all had to work harder and thus we work together. First, I'm gonna start by thanking everyone from around the world who watches this show. Muchas gracias, recibo co, obrigado, arigato, danke schön, shukran, toda, um, and ASL, sign language, I learned this year. Thank you. But I have to say, I have met so many people from around the world. I cannot believe how many people watch this show. It is um, the gift that keeps on giving. I love people. I love traveling, and I haven't been able to travel during COVID. And whenever I've traveled before, in the U.S., outside of the U.S., so many people come and say how much they love the show. And then as a result of pandemic, even more people binge watch the show. Um, it blows my mind to this day and is probably one of the things I'm most grateful for that I'm able to connect and meet so many people from around the world that appreciate this show, really. John Bokenkamp and John Eisendrath, they put magic in a bottle. I honestly don't know. It's the writers. I, I don't know. I'm just lucky to be a, a part of it. I mean, there's, look, were led by the great James Bader. They populated the cast with, everyone is just so right for their part. Everyone is so wonderful. And, you know, there is a great mythology that carries people through that you wanna know within also, like each season there's villains that, they end every episode with how are we gonna get out of that? And I'm like, how are we gonna get out of that? So I can't read, so if I can't rate to read the next episode and like, you know, like devour it, I'm a fan of the show and I'm like devouring it, like I, I, I get it, like you guys, I don't know, I honestly don't know why. Um, I guess that's sort of why, um, but um, honestly, I'm just like, I feel like I'm still holding on to this lottery ticket that is getting to be a part of the show and I'm holding on tight. Liz has become a criminal. And she's learned all kinds of tricks and how to outsmart and navigate and build a team and leverage things. She learned from the best. She learned from Raymond Reddington. Um, and it's heartbreaking for Aram that she went down that road. It's heartbreaking for him all through the season. Um, but it's exciting television. And, uh, and he met his match in many ways. But one of the cool things is that here is this person, Liz Keene, who is dead set on sacrificing everything in order to stop him and kill him. And here is this man who still wants to protect the person who wants to kill him. I just thought that is just and she knows that, and that, that breaks her heart. It's just so confusing, not, not plot confusing, emotionally confusing, and I just think that makes for uh, rich television, as well as you know how we all feel about it. I, I'm not against either of them, and I, I don't like what's happening, and I, Ram is trying to you know, keep it together, and you know, he took a dark, it was a hard thing for him when he said he had to arrest her, and then when he did arrest her, and. Aram and Liz are kind of like siblings, and it, it, she was breaking his heart about what she was doing, but he also knows that she's been through something unlike anyone else, losing all her family members, and so it was uh, wild. So um, losing Clark, uh, Clark 
Middleton was awful. In terms of the show, uh, we lost uh, the greatest scene stealer on the blacklist. He was so good. I mean, I would read his scenes and be like, oh my God. And then I would watch them and I would actually get jealous. I was like, this is so good. It was the fun, he's the funniest, I think he's by far the funniest character that has come through uh, uh, this show. And the only person who can rile up Mr. Reddington. Um, I don't know if people are familiar with his body of work, but it's tremendous. I mean, he's a, an American treasure. And, you know, people may not know he has a great uh, body of theater work. And we would talk about that all the time. And the guy loves acting. And he loves actors and he loves the process. And I believe Clark was 56, maybe 54. Um, and like a kid in a candy store. So the last time I spoke to him, which was, gosh, you know, the previous season before the hiatus, um, just loves to tell stories about this actor, this experience, how much uh, he revered uh, James's work. And I, I'm just sad I didn't get a scene with him. And we always talked about that. But I was lucky enough to know him and um, rest in peace, my brother. I, it, it was such a sweet scene where I had to um, kind of explain to them what's going on and then I played games with them and, uh, and then Liz came in that episode to take her. And I said I would arrest Liz, but I could not, um, I could not separate a mother from her child. You know, all, wrestler couldn't turn Liz in, Cooper couldn't and we all thought we should resign because we're not able to do our jobs because of our soft spot for Liz, for better or for worse. And Aram, I think, was ready to arrest her, but he could not separate a mother from child, even if it was, to, it's, a, it's a morally gray area for what's right and what's wrong. So uh, it's, it's not very often that one gets to play a role for eight years. Um, I know that I personally am a different person than I was eight years ago. I mean, the same person, but uh, actually, scientifically, all our cells die and regenerate every seven years. So we are literally a different person, physically, from where we were seven years, like, you know. And, um, and now we're in year eight, so I'm starting to be, no. <laughs> and, and so Aram is a different person. And so you can't separate the two. You go hand in hand. Like, I'm going through stuff in my life, and Aram is going through stuff. And um, one thing I, I can say that I just like love playing about him. I just my favorite thing about Aram is that you know he has a big heart, he has a smart brain, and all that stuff. But my favorite thing is he's braver than he even realizes. I just I hope that I can that I, I can be like that. Uh, so it's an honor to play him. And I don't think that aspect of him has changed. Everything else, I think, has evolved and grown. He's gone through. I certainly never thought he'd be where he, I certainly didn't think we'd still be doing the show eight years later. Like, my God, I was like, hope we get another season eight years later. Um, but I, he's been through love triangles, multiple heartbreak, like... Elise Samar, the biggest heartbreak of his life, turning point for him in the season series, and um, and last season um, Elodie. So to go through all those breakups and then to realize he needs to be trained in the field, um, and then start now he goes out in the field and his confidence has grown a great deal. 
clearly he's grown a, a ton of ways. You know, one of the only ways, you know, somebody can often truly grow is if they've sort of been through the fire. And he's had his heart broken three times on this show. De and the Samar being the biggest heartbreak of his life, where he was ready to just give it all up. Um, he's been under fire. He's had to shoot people. It's the last thing he ever wants to do. Uh, and he's trained in the field. Uh, and I like how this season, how confident and, and clear he is in the field. You know, him and Wrestler are going out there together at times. And but I still also love that he's always uh, reverent of Mr. Reddington and Mr. Cooper. He always gives them a Mr. in front of both of their names. They are his, uh, they, they know, he, he respects wisdom and authority. Um, Aram like knows his place. Um, and he just always, always wants to help, even with blind spots. I know he is, I, I, Aram's weakness is his heart. He, he will let Liz get away or maybe not hurt someone, even though he has to for the good of sort of the task force. But uh, if that's your weakness, I'll take it. Where do we go from here? If Liz is number one on the blacklist, what, what, what are we gonna do next? This is it, I guess we're done. Like, um, I didn't expect that. I don't know, I think, I feel like everybody kind of thought that it would be Mr. Reddington in some ways. Um, kind of like, uh, um, I didn't, I didn't know she would even be on the blacklist, but it makes sense, but I, it makes sense. If we're gonna have the person, the, the, in, in many ways, the hardest person to catch, not just physically because of how or just skilled she is from everything she knows about the task force and how we work and everything she's learned from Mr. Reddington. She knows all the tricks of the trade. She knows all our vulnerable points. And um, it makes sense in that way. But also, it's so hard because Red wants to protect her. We all want to protect her. We don't want to have to bring her in. We want to protect her from being in harm's way. Sometimes that means bringing her in. Sometimes that doesn't. Bringing her in is not even the safest thing with Townsend after her. So uh, it ultimately, once I got to see how the season unfolded, it was perfect. I thought it was, it was perfect.